the Cincinnati NAACP AXO category, Computer Science. My name is Amani Sherman and I'm a graduate research assistant at the University of Florida. Uh, I am from Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, I'm currently pursuing my PhD in human-centered computing at the University of Florida. How to achieve 100 points. So the first thing that you wanna do is pick a research category that will draw your audience in. So you wanna pick something that is of interest to you, but it's also of interest to other people. So, um, you know, what you wanna think about is what we have going on now. That's of interest to everyone, right? So we're all working from home. Even students are working from home. We have COVID going on. There's a lot of things around Black Lives Matter and diversity and inclusion. And so maybe you could build something around that or uh, maybe you can improve upon something that already exists. So these are some of the things that you want to think about as you're deciding what kind of research you're going to do and present for the competition. So as you are developing your research topic and um, figuring out what it is that you want to do, make sure that you're actually starting early. And doing this is going to help you go beyond whatever the minimum suggestions or requirements are. And the reason that this happens is because when you start early, you begin to really learn whatever the topic is. And it really becomes natural to you to be able to kind of regurgitate information. And you begin to do more than just knowing the facts. But now you actually understand what's happening, what's going on. And then you can move forward with that information. That's going to be really impressive to the judges to see someone who has really, you know, gotten really in the depth of whatever that topic is. And they have really become knowledgeable about their topic. And so that's what's going to help you kind of move beyond uh, other people who you are competing against is really being knowledgeable about um, the information or the topic that you're going to present. Now, in doing this, it's also going to help you become more confident when you present. So, of course, practicing is really going to be helpful. But knowing the information is really the best way to go about doing that presentation, because what that means is even if you forget your line or whatever it is that you rehearsed, because you actually know it and you know what you did and it's kind of ingrained in your your natural habit, you'll be able to talk about it naturally anyway. Um, and what happens sometimes is you may not even need a script. You'll be able to just talk about exactly what it is that you did because you did it and you also kind of took your time to get there especially if you start early you can take your time and really do every single step with enough time to fix things and recuperate and then by the time presentation comes you will have practiced it enough times so where you'll know the information you'll be able to answer questions and it'll make you feel a lot more confident about what you have to present to the judges. So when we are thinking about computer science and some research ideas that we may want to do, I know that a lot of people immediately want to do an app or maybe create a website or even create some kind of item. Uh, I want you to make sure that you're really thinking about the impact that the item is going to have on your community. So make sure that you are developing, developing something or creating something that can be really helpful. So for example, a lot of you are, are students who are going to be, um, some of you at least will be going back to school, but doing it virtually. You know, what kind of things will be helpful to you as a, as a student that computer science could actually solve? So maybe it could be, you know, some kind of app that helps you, you know, stay in tune with your homework or doing the things that you need to do. Maybe it's an app that helps you take breaks. Um, just keep thinking about, you know, what are some things that you need that you also believe that other people need and that will help you to kind of identify a research topic. Other ideas that you might want to think about is, you know, we have a lot of protesters who are, you know, protesting for Black Lives Matter. Well, what are some things that those protesters might need? Maybe you could build something around that. Or maybe you've seen a tool or some kind of, you know, app or um, maybe even something with your TV that you notice is just not right or incorrect. Then you may want to try to develop something or create something that improves upon that, right? So maybe you Maybe it's your phone. Maybe your phone doesn't take great pictures. So you want to create something that helps to improve your camera. Maybe, you know, you want to improve some device that maybe one of your parents has and you want to make it go faster or you want to make it work, but it's quieter. Uh, these are some things that you can think about in doing this. And you may be thinking, well, some of these ideas are too far-fetched or I can't do that. Well, 
what you want to do is reach out to someone who is knowledgeable, who can help you achieve that goal. So, you know, you can always reach out to professors at universities or even just professionals. Um, people love to get back to their community. So feel free to email and reach out to people and get the help that you need. Um, allow them to kind of help and guide you to a project that is well defined, but also that can help you reach these research goals. Computer science. Computer science is a science that deals with the theor theoretical aspects of computers. Now, computer science is kind of a, a broad area, and it includes a lot of things. That could be software, so things like Word, where you know we use that to type and write our documents. That could also be hardware. So my favorite example of hardware is robots, right? Robotics. Um, and that actually includes a couple of different areas. So that includes electrical engineering, computer engineering, and also computer science. So you have your hardware side that's actually building the, the robot and putting it together and maybe even putting certain software on it. Um, but really the computer science aspect could also just be programming it, right? So, you know, you want to write the program that makes the robot go left and right and maybe even jump. There are other areas of computer science um, that deal with data. So when we look at artificial intelligence, you know, a big part of that is looking at data and being able to use that data to then determine other things. Right. So facial recognition, that's really a lot of what that is, is, you know, they have these big data sets that have pictures of, you know, many, many people and um, they train, you know, an algorithm on these data sets. And then that's what allows it to then be able to recognize faces and parts of a face. Uh, as it moves forward. So you have this algorithm, you train it, and it, then it begins to learn what it's supposed to do. And then we have other aspects of computer science that really look at the human part of it, right? So that's what I do. I look at human-centered computing. And with that, we look at how humans interact with computers. And so that could just mean, you know, making tools and systems more usable so that way people can actually use the system but it could also be making it more accessible. So looking at how people with disabilities, like the blind and the hard of hearing, you know, how do they interact with computers and what are some things that we can do to make those interactions a lot more smooth. So all of this is computer science. Now you can only submit one project, but with this one project, you also uh, will need to do a visual presentation at, um, at the competition so that would be basically like a poster board that may have some pictures and words on it and then also of course whatever it is that you build you definitely want to make sure that that is there to show the judges the other thing is is that you will need to submit a five page maximum written report so basically you're going to be writing a written report that can be a max of five pages so do not go over the five page limit now you want to make sure that you have six copies of this written report. So what should go in the written report? Well, you wanna tell us what your motivation was for the project, of course, what the project is, the methods that you use to conduct your research. So, you know, did you have to do a survey? What kind of testing did you use? And also why? So make sure you're using the right references, you know, reference your textbooks, your research papers, make sure all of that is in there so that way we know, you know, where you got your information from. Then you want to discuss your results. So tell us, you know, how you got the results, what you did to analyze them, and then what the results actually are. And then in the end, you want to tell us why those results matter. So, for example, let's say that you were the one that created some type of, uh, you know, COVID tracking app, right? So you created an app that tracks COVID, right? So we can see how many people have COVID in different places, and it just tracks the numbers. Let's say you did that and you surveyed, you know, 100 people about the use of this app and people love the app. Right. So what are the implications of that? What does that tell us? Why would that be important? Well, in this example, that would be important because one, it shows that, you know, the app is usable. People really liked it and that this is one way that we could be able to track things in the future. If people feel comfortable and safe with an app like this, imagine what the other use cases could be. So in this case, we use it to track, you know, people who have COVID. 
Well, maybe in the future we could use it to track votes, right? When it's time to vote, maybe you can use that app for the same thing and people would use it and see it. But this also shows that people are okay with downloading apps that actually track these types of things. So, you know, this time it was COVID, but maybe it could be the flu because we know every year we, you know, we deal with the flu. Um, but these are just some type of implications that we have. And then, you know, whatever your results say, maybe there's other things, right? So any kind of app that is tracking something, you also have to deal with privacy concerns and security concerns. And so if you were to create that type of app, you might also speak to that as well. So for your work, when you talk about implications, tell us why does this even matter? Why do these results matter? Why should we care? And what impact will these results have in uh, that area? So for us, you know, what results what do these results mean for computer science or whatever STEM field that you have chosen? You will also need to do an oral presentation and that needs to be five minutes. And you know, like we've discussed before, just make sure that you're practicing your presentation so that way it sticks to that five minutes and you're prepared to answer any questions that the judges may have. Contestants are required to provide their own equipment but you can request some electrical power and a table for your display board if you need it. Just make sure that you make that request ahead of time. You will also need to have someone sign your STEM verification form. So this needs to be someone who is knowledgeable about the research area that you have chosen and who has a degree related to that area. Um, what I would suggest is that whoever your mentor is for this project, that they be the person that also sign your scientific, uh, your, or, sorry, your science verification form. So in order to find this person, if you feel like you don't know anyone, just ask around, you know, you, you're a part of a community, just look at your community, see who you can ask. And if you feel like you don't know anyone, um, maybe your parents can help you email someone at a university and see if they might be able to mentor you through this. Projects will be judged by the following criteria. The first is quality of research. Now your scientific approach or scientific method will be worth 20 points. So for this, just make sure that you're using an, a real scientific approach or method. And what you can do is use the scientific method that you've learned in school, but also you can reference you know, textbooks or different papers and see what other researchers have done. Uh, one good way to do this is to watch videos. So there are many videos on YouTube where researchers are talking about the work that they're doing. And in doing so, they're also communicating their research method. So whatever scientific method that they've chosen to use. And that will help you uh, decide what it is that you want to do. You also want to, you will also be judged on the validity of your information that you provide and the validity of your conclusions. Now, each of those is worth 10 points. Now with these, you just want to make sure that you're referencing information that will make sure that your information is valid. And then you also want to make sure that you check your math when it comes to your conclusion. So if you have statistics or you know percentages or anything like that, where you've tested speed, make sure you've done it enough times and redone your math enough times so that way you know that it is correct. And this is also where your mentor can come in because they can also, you know, double check things and even just guide you in the right direction to make sure that you're doing these things correctly. The next category is depth of understanding the oral presentation. Now, the first thing under this is worth 20 points and it is knowledge gained and creativity. So in this category, uh, for this area, what you wanna do is make sure that first that you have actually gained some knowledge and be able to communicate that to the judges, but also make sure that they walk away learning something for themselves. So sometimes you may be working on a project that a lot of people may be familiar with, but make sure that there's something new, you know, in whatever it is that you're doing that you can uh, educate people on. You also wanna make sure that you're being creative especially in this oral presentation. So maybe you start off with something unique or maybe you end with something unique. This is also why it's important to look at what previous uh, contestants have done to see, you know, what was it that made their oral presentation so great? And that may help you figure out how you want to organize your own. Just really be yourself and that's when you're going to be the most creative. The next is thoroughness and individual work. And this is worth 20 points. 
And for this, you just want to make sure that you are, you know, crossing all of your T's, dotting all of your I's. Make sure that you complete the work from beginning to end. Don't skip any steps, especially in your research method. And if you do skip a step or you didn't actually complete something, make sure that you talk about why. Because the judges are going to know that something was skipped or something was wrong. So what you want to do is be able to explain why you skipped a certain step or why you didn't finish. Um, that way it'll bring everything in full circle. Also, don't plagiarize your work. And what this means is taking someone else's work and making it and trying to you know, portray it as your own. Sometimes we do this on purpose, um, but most of the times it happens on accident. And this is why it's really important to be able to reach out to a mentor or someone who can help you make sure that the work that you are presenting is original. Uh, if you are seeing someone else's work and you're just trying to improve upon what someone else has already done, that's OK. But just make sure that you state that in the beginning, you know, make sure that you mention their name and just say, you know, I know that this work already exists, but we wanted to approve upon it by doing X, Y, Z. And here's what makes my work unique. Uh, so that will help you to make sure that you're really being thorough in your work and you're also showing the individuality and uniqueness of what you're doing. Um, so you're pointing out what other people have done, but you're really showcasing what makes your work unique and why it was important. And the last two categories that you will be judged uh, in will be your your written report and also your presentation. And so for those, just make sure that for your written report that uh, people can really understand what you have written. And so to do that, just make sure that you have other people read what you wrote. Make sure that you do a spell check and grammar check and all of those things to make sure that people can actually understand every single uh, piece of your written report. One thing that I do when I write my reports is I make sure that I have helpful titles for each section of my paper. So that way people know um, what that section is about. So for example, when I'm writing about my motivation or my results, I'll make sure that the title will say motivation or results. That way people know exactly where that information is in the paper and they can go right to it if they need to. And for your presentations, your oral and even your visual, just make sure that you are practicing um, and really giving it your all. If you practice, you're gonna have a great presentation. So here are some tips for a successful completion of your project. So one thing that you want to do is you definitely want to identify a mentor that can help guide you through the process. So this should be someone who is knowledgeable about um, whatever area that you have chosen. So for this particular video, I'm talking about computer science. So in that case, you definitely want to make sure you choose a mentor who knows a little bit about computer science, maybe programming or um, you know, app development, web design something along those lines so that way they can help guide you and direct you. Now, one point I do want to make on mentoring is that you definitely want someone who is knowledgeable in the area, but don't forget about, you know, your parents, your cousins, your grandparents. Uh, sometimes we think that they may not be, you know, knowledgeable in the area, maybe because they don't have a degree in that area, but they can be really helpful when it comes to figuring out what research topic you want to choose. And so sometimes they have really great ideas or they can help you think through your own ideas. So make sure that you're speaking to other people about the ideas that you have so that way you can reach your, your goal. Now, you also want to make sure that you are reviewing the guidelines for the competition and for doing your research. So make sure that you read over whatever rules and guidelines that Axel has for you. Make sure that you are reading through that document, not just once, but at least two times. So that way you know whether you understand something or not. And if you see some words that you may not understand, you can look them up and do your research. That way you actually know exactly what it is that is required of you and you can execute them. Start your research early. And the benefit of starting early is that it actually will give you time to brainstorm, come up with the timeline for the work that you're going to do. You can even start looking at, you know, who won in the, in the computer science category last year or whatever, you know, category that you're in and see what they did, see what you liked about that and see how you can kind of incorporate that into your own thing. So you want to start early so that way you have time to get a timeline, find a mentor, see, you know, how other people, um, what they did, who won, and what are some things that they did that were really awesome that you can implement in, uh, in your project. So what you want to do uh, is also practice your presentation, not just your oral presentation, but also your visual presentation. Now, uh, in practicing your presentation, you're going to get to a point where you'll be able to present your information 
well. So you want to get as close to perfection as you can. And we're not really looking for something that is perfect, right? Because no one is perfect. But we want to get to a place where you are able to deliver your presentation well and people can understand exactly what you're trying to convey. Now, in practicing this, you want to do a couple of things. The first is you want to make sure that you're practicing around other people. Have them give you feedback on your presentation, the way that you're speaking, the way that you're answering questions, and try to uh, you know, fix your, your presentation or the things that you're saying so that way everyone can understand what you're trying to convey. The other thing that you want to do is record yourself practicing. So you want to record yourself visually, so using your camera, and then you also want to try to record yourself just the audio. And the reason why you want to do that is because you want to see what is it that you're actually doing while you are talking. So for me, I know I talk a lot with my hands. It's something that I do naturally. So one of the things that I try to do is remove things from my hands and then I try to see, you know, in what places am I moving my hands more or less so that way I can figure out, you know, well, why am I moving my hands so much in this one place and how can I minimize that? Because sometimes there are different things that we may do naturally that can also be distracting. So you want to be able to watch that and figure out what it is that's going to make you look the way that you want to be, uh, the way that you want to look to other people. The other thing um, is you're recording your voice. And so the reason why uh, you want to record your voice is because you want to hear how you sound. You know, are you, do you sound happy? Do you sound sad, monotone? Um, are you actually pronouncing the words correctly? Are you talking too loud, too soft? You want to make sure that you um, are listening to yourself and figuring out how you can improve. So for me, I know that sometimes I can either talk monotone. And so I know, OK, I need to, you know, perk it up a little bit and try to you know, talk louder. The other issue that I have sometimes is that I have trouble mis uh, pronouncing words. So sometimes I mispronounce words when I speak and I don't even notice it as I'm talking. So often what I'll do before I give a presentation is practice it and record the audio, figure out which words I find myself stumbling, uh, stumbling over or stuttering uh, on. And then what I do is I practice just those words. So that way when I give my presentation, I can say the words correctly. So these are just some things that you want to keep in mind uh, when it comes to doing your presentation. So make sure that you practice so that way you can give a well rehearsed and well understood presentation uh, at the competition. But in the end, just practice, practice, practice. Make sure that you are practicing and more practice. And even if you're tired of practicing, keep practicing so that way you will be prepared for your oral presentation and your visual presentation. You also want to just be yourself. Pick a research project that you like and you enjoy learning more about because that's going to make it easier for you to do it from start to finish. Get a great mentor to help you out, um, especially in those days where you're having a tough time, you know, figuring things out and moving forward. Get someone who can actually assist you and help you move uh, through that work. You also just have fun. Uh, make sure it's fun and enjoyable. Uh, try to just enjoy every moment of this. You're going to learn so much um, from doing the research, even presenting and seeing what other people have come up with. You're going to enjoy yourself. You're going to have a great time. Just enjoy it. And this is how you achieve 100 points.